This course tour will show you how to move through this course. On the home page, you will see announcements from your teacher with various course updates or information. You can always get back to the home page by clicking the course name at the top of the screen. To get to the course content, click the content tab. The Start Here page contains everything you need to complete your enrollment in the course. A separate startup video will show you the specifics of how to complete your enrollment so you can access everything you see in this current video. Notice that there are numerous tips to help you successfully complete the course, such as how to compress an image file. You will have to submit images to your instructor, so it is suggested that you learn how to compress an image. Once your startup assignment is marked and you've been fully enrolled, you'll be able to see the rest of the modules on the content page. The links in each module will take you to the lessons, the assignment files, the assignment submission folders, and the quizzes. Notice that there are a lot of links for each module and you will have to keep clicking the Load More button at the bottom to view the rest of the links. The course is hosted in a learning environment called Brightspace, what we are looking at right now. The lessons used in this course are created by a company called StudyForge. Notice how the lessons are described as external learning tools. This means that when you click the link, it will open in a new tab in your internet browser. We'll go into more detail about how to use StudyForge a little bit later. If you go back to the Brightspace tab, you'll see the Brightspace lesson page, which only contains a link to the StudyForge lesson. To get back to the content page, where you can see all the components of the module and to figure out what to do next, click any of the names in the navigation tree at the top of the page. You should move through the module by completing each of the items in the order presented on the Brightspace environment. Let's talk about the assignments now. If we open one up, like biology assignment number one, you will see a preview of the file. But to actually complete this assignment, you will need to download the file to your computer. Anywhere you see a yellow box is where you should be inserting your work. Most of the assignments are Word documents. If you don't have Microsoft Word, there are many other programs you can use to complete the assignment. The formatting might just be slightly altered. Once you've completed the assignment and are ready to submit it, go to the Assignments tab at the top of the page. Choose the appropriate folder, upload the assignment from your computer, and click Submit. The easiest files for your teacher to mark are Word files but PDF documents work as well. If you have pictures of your work, these should usually be inserted into the assignment document. However, you can also upload image files directly to the assignment folder. Anytime you are submitting an image, make sure you resize the image document to around 200 kilobytes in size. Go to the Tips content section to see how to do this. Back in the Assignments page, notice that there are folders for your completed notes. In StudyForge, you will generate a fill-in-the-blank version of the notes that you can fill in as you move through the lessons. You will have to submit your completed notes to gain access to the review package for the face-to-face -face exams and to have your test marked. If you're ready to complete a quiz, you can access it in two ways. First, you can click on the quiz link in the module page. The second way is to click on the quizzes tab at the top and choose which quiz you want to write. Notice that in Brightspace, there is a meter on the top of the page that tells you how much of the course you've completed. Unfortunately, this is not a reliable way to understand how much of the course you have actually done. This tool only tracks how many of the pages you've opened, but it doesn't know that some pages involve significantly more work than others, 
or whether you've actually completed everything in that page. A better way to see how much of the course you've completed is to look at your grades page. The numbers that you should look at are the middle number and the last number. The middle number tells you what percent of the graded assessments you've completed. This takes into account the weighting of the assessments. So, after you write a face-to-face -face exam, which is worth 20% of your mark, this number will increase by 20. The last number tells you your current mark from all of the assessments you've completed so far. To finish the tour, we're going to look at a StudyForge lesson. When you look at a StudyForge lesson, you will see a navigation bar at the top of the page. Notice that you can actually navigate to any other course, module, or lesson. We recommend that you do not use this navigation tool to move between lessons for this course because StudyForge does not tell you when you need to stop and complete an assignment or quiz. Instead, use the Brightspace environment to figure out what to do next. This printer icon is where you can generate the fill-in-the-blank notes for the lessons. Before you start the lesson, make sure you've printed the fill-in-the-blank notes that will help you follow along with the video lessons and will assist you in learning the material. Once the notes have been generated, you can choose to print them out on paper or to print them to a PDF file. Research studies have shown that the physical act of writing significantly improves a student's learning. Therefore, it is recommended that you physically print them out and fill them in by hand. However, you do have the option of filling them in electronically by using a PDF editing software. If this is the option you want to take, see the tips content section for links on how to do this. When it comes time to submit the notes, scan your paper notes or take a picture of them and submit it to the proper assignment folder. Now that you've printed the notes, you can start the lesson. You can watch the videos, click through the different readings, work through simulations, and answer the practice questions. Some StudyForge practice questions will have pictures or tables in the question that you can interact with. To add your answers to these questions, just drag the picture into your workspace and then add in your answers with the typing or drawing tools. Notice how StudyForge tracks what you've completed with this green color. Many of the lessons will have a question titled Glossary. This is a special question that has been bookmarked and linked to a project. The project bookmarks allow you to be able to view all the lesson components that are linked to that project. So, if you wanted to look back at all your glossary terms when studying for the exam, you can open up the glossary project. The glossary project runs through the whole course. Other projects, however, are specific to a certain module so you would find them under the Lesson drop-down box. If at the end of the module you are working on a project and want to relook at a video or reading related to it, you can open up that project and StudyForge will show you all the lesson components with that project's bookmark. You or your teacher can check your progress through the StudyForge lessons at any time by clicking the course name. You can see what percentage of each module you've completed, or you can look with much more detail and see which lesson components you've completed within a given lesson. This concludes our tour. I hope you enjoy taking online science with the VLN.